But this uh, this mess work was first couple of weeks, you said? Or, or eight months. Eight, eight months? Yeah, I did that eight months. Before you were worthy of joining the Sea Org? Um, the first time I didn't really join the Sea Org, because you have to finish the EPF, and you finish it. And if you don't finish the EPF, you're not starting to be a Sea Org member. You're not a Sea Org member before you haven't finished the EPF. So the second time when I went on the EPF, I um, I finished the EPF during I think about I think it took three or four weeks, and um, yeah, and then I was a Sea Org member. And what were the courses you took at that point? Well, I did the um, I did a course regarding studying. How do you study? And then I did a course um, called Welcome to the Sea Org. What was uh, what was that like? What, what did you learn in that? Well, how is the ship built? What kind of um, uh, why is the Sea Org? Um, but you weren't on a ship. No, I wasn't on a ship. But you had to learn how the ship was built. Exactly, because the Sea Org is like a ship, like if you were on the ship. I see. What do you learn in the ethics course? Everything about ethics. Yeah, I had to read the whole ethics book and uh, about 30 other policies, FOs or HDO policies about I was, ethics. I was never in Scientology. It seems like Scientology's idea of ethics is far different from the real world's yeah. view of ethics. Were there any contrasts that you saw in, in Scientology ethics? Is there anything that, that we would find interesting? Anything that struck you odd when you were taking the course? Well, the only thing which I couldn't really understand was um, the thing about the suppressed person. Because um, there is like about 20 points about a, a suppressed person. And I was like thinking, well, okay, my dad is a suppressive person, my grandma is a suppressive person, you know? That, that was the kind of thought I had when I was reading it. You so you that's the reason why I couldn't understand it. You, you thought they fell into these traits yeah. that made up a suppressive person? Exactly. And, and yet, during that time, I was also thinking that I myself was a suppressed person. And, yet and they then were some point, Scientologists, weren't they? You're, you're, yeah. You're, yeah, yeah. And then there was coming some. There was coming one uh, one point where it says, um, "A suppressive person never thinks that he is a suppressive person." So somebody who thinks he is a suppressive person isn't a suppressive person. <laughs> that sounds like L. Ron Hubbard thinking. Yeah. Yeah. So you're back with your family for, for how long again before you go back? I came back when I was, I think, about one or two months before I was getting 14. And um, then I was, till I was 15 there. And after, and in the summer holidays of Munich, in Munich, I think that was a Ju July or something, July, I think, 92 or 91 or something, I went back to uh, St. Hill. But the only reason why I went back to, the, to St. Hill was because I was actually supposed to go on stage and sing. But you... you. Uh... But at the first time I, I came there, they grabbed me and they would bring me to the recruitment office. And they told me, well, everything would happen again, what happened in the past is all cancelled. It happened and nobody's going to look at it. And uh, you have a new chance to come to the Sea Org to do the EPF, to finish the EPF, everything has changed, the rule has been harder and the EPFIC has harder rules and um, he has to take, he really has to take care of his um, EPFer and the CMO is pushing everything and things like that. And they gave the promise that I'm going to go to school and I told them, well, um, if I can do a career as a singer in the Sea Org, I'm going to come, otherwise I'm not going to sign the contract. And they promised, and they promised that I go to school, and it never happened. So when you came back, did you have to go through the EPF again? Yeah. And was it as brutal? Well, um, I didn't do the same thing like with the lake story there. Right. But because I did. the pipe was probably yeah. fixed by then. Yeah, exactly. So what type of things did they have you doing then? I was build. I was helping to build Walsh Manor. This is like. A real big building, like yeah, about this building. Okay. And I was helping to build that building. This one, this one, this is the building for all staffs 
in the UK, and all Sea Org members in the UK, where they live. And same type of schedule, 8 till 5, then study at night. And how long were you working on this then? Four weeks. Four weeks, and then you graduated this time, and you became part of the Sea Org. Exactly. And what was that like? I was feeling like, man, I did it. I really did it. Yeah. So you had a win? Yeah. I had a, I had a real big win. Yeah. And uh, did you, was the Sea Org what you expected? Yeah. At that point, yes. So what, the, type of, what type of jobs were you doing? I was, um, I was for about two years, I was a receptionist. Like, um, if you're a receptionist, you're responsible for everybody who's in the building in ASH UK. You have to know where's the CEO, you have to know where all the um, executives are. Um, if, some, if a public comes, you have to have a routing form. You're responsible that all routing forms are there. There's about 20 or 30 routing, different routing forms you have to have. You're responsible that um, the public are going to the reg office to give them money, you know. Um, you, I was responsible for um, all the letters which come in and go out. I was responsible for um, what I was. I was writing about 100 letters a day to publics. What were those letters? Like, for example, you have a you have a file, right? And you take you take a look at the file. Whatever. What did the person in Scientology? How long has has the person haven't been there? Um, for example, you write in this letter, um, dear, I don't know, dear Bean or whatever. Um, how are you? How are you? Um, my name is blah blah blah. I was taking a look at your file. I was I saw that you did this in Scientology and um, um, you haven't been a long time in Scientology. What's happened? Love blah blah. blah. La Vivian or something. So you're just trying to bring people back into the org? And trying to find out what happened to the person. Why didn't the person come back? The first year, I've seen my parents um, Christmas for three days. And then um, when I came back, no, before, exactly, before I wanted to go, I had a CSW. The CSW was approved. CSW is, CSW is like... Um, Completed CS completed situation work exactly. So there you have to explain. For example, you have to explain the situation. I want to go to Germany to my parents. Then you have to write what you know why. For example, I was writing. I haven't seen my parents for one year, and um, I have got two sisters, and I want to see my sisters. I want to have a little bit of time with my family. And then you have to write uh, like um, what was the other point? I can't, I can't remember. And then you have to write, please approve the CSW. And then you have approve and disapprove. So um, she let me go to my parents. When I came back after three days, I went to ethics. Because she says I was blown. I had to write OWs, overs and withholds, and had to do the conditions from uh, treason onwards. Did you find that helpful? No. I was pissed. Had you blown? Pardon me? Had you blown at that point? No. The CSW was approved. Mm -hmm. Did this make you want to blow? Yes. How long? How long after this incident did you actually blow? I never blow. You never did. Yeah. So how did you leave Scientology? Well, um, there was a situation which I have to say, <laughs> when I was still the receptionist, um, I was a fr Tanya was a, fr was a friend of mine. And um, I had a 2D. You know 2D? 2D, no. Second dynamic. That means boyfriend. Oh, okay. I had a boyfriend, and um, he was the FBO, the financial uh, finance banking officer. And he was working in Birmingham. And um, they, we had some problem. We had some troubles because his boss. We had the feeling that she was doing uh, third party. You know third party? Yes. Explain it to me, though. That means like uh, that some person is trying to destroy our relationship. She's trying to tell him, listen, she's out ethics. She's not a good person for you. You can't marry, marry her. Um, she's not doing a good job. And um, if you, it's not a good idea because you're in Birmingham. She's in AUSH. You can't see each other every single day. You see, maybe you see in you know every two weeks or every four weeks or something. 
um, um, you have no chance to really have a relationship. That kind of stuff happens. And um, Tanya wrote a report about it. And she, this lady, which was the boss, she was in CMO. CMO is what? CMO is the commanding management of commanding management office. I think so, like that. Commanding management office. Yeah, commanding management office, exactly. And this is the highest organization in Saint Hill. And what was the result of? The result was I was taking off my post, and I went to ethics. You went to ethics because I went she was writing a report. Uh, I had to go to the to the boss of the um, of the bus from the FBO, yeah. And she was asking me why did I say that and blah 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 blah. And this went like on and on and on and on. And she says, well, you're going to go to ethics and you're going to write your W's because you have something fault with you. Your personality is fault. 